Okay, it's going. So welcome everyone to the call. Um, we are so excited to have Amanda Wright, National Marketing Director, as our guest speaker. And I just wanted to say, um, you know, that we're all thinking about Natalia Irving. That's the reason that we have Amanda on this call, because she, uh, because Natalia invited Amanda. Um, but as many of you know, Alan is not doing well at all. So just keep her in your hearts, you know, and our, our, you know, our thoughts and our prayers are going out to her. And, you know, all the support she can get from us um, is, is, is the best. So, um, but I, as we were talking, uh, I talked to Natalia today and she was telling me the story of how she met Amanda on the plane to Q school and how they, you know, they got to talk all the way and how, how inspired she was by Amanda's story. And as some of you know, Amanda uh, became a national marketing director in Uganda. So it's a very interesting story. Um, and she's also, she's a mom of two, two young boys. She's married. She's from Denver, Colorado, and her background is in physical therapy. And I am going to let Amanda tell you the rest of the story. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak with you tonight. And definitely I'm thinking of Natalia and Alan and just sending them lots of love and prayers. Um, so I'd love to know, I want this to be interactive. This is, this call is about mindset. So I'm here to serve you guys. And if you can use the chat function or you can come off uh, mute if you want, I'll definitely share my story, but would love, you know, just to know what maybe what your challenges are around mindset. What, what are some things that you would like to, um, that you sometimes, you know, have some struggles with? Is there anything that you particularly want to know tonight or have me discuss? Michelle? So I am struggling right now with um, recruiting and that's my focus and I don't know whether I'm too focused on it, but um, that's, that's what I'm, you know, kind okay. of struggling with. Love right it. Now. Love it. Okay. So focus on recruiting. All right. So as Michelle was letting you know, anyone else, you can always type in the chat as you're, if you're like, oh, I really want to know about this or this is on my mind. So my background is a physical, is as a physical therapist, as Michelle said, I have worked in hospitals for about 15 years, but during the, the, that time, I also went and got my life coaching certification. I was a manager at a big therapy center and all these people kept coming into my office with all these questions and I was like, ah, I need help. I'm getting paid to help, to help them and I need help figuring out what questions to ask. So I realized life coaching was really getting really good at asking good questions. It was getting really good at uh, helping you with your own mindset so that you could help others, helping people maybe identify their blind spots, helping people create vision, helping people, you know, find a different perspective. So that's where, you know, that's where a lot of my background comes from is that life coaching piece of me that I had private clients for a while. I did coaching in groups. And then I also inter interwined, um, uh, yoga yoga teacher certification in my journey. So in about 2013, I had a chance to go to Malaysia to get my yoga teacher certification. And so that's another piece of, I feel like my life coaching and sort of where I'm coming from is, you know, when you're in a yoga classroom, it's all about listening to your body, listening to your, calming your body so you can listen to your mind, being really present, present with your breath. So I think you know, I bring this perspective of really coming at my mindset from both a, a mind and body connection and making sure that they're both on board. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later tonight. So when we really, as Michelle was again sharing my story, I was at, I was at sales coordinator. Are there any sales coordinators in the call? Just raise your hand. Yeah, great. Okay. So I was at sales coordinator. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I was at sales coordinator in 2015. I've been in the business five years. In 2015, I was at sales coordinator. I slow tracked to sales coordinator. I was just building my business a little bit slowly on the side as I was working physical therapy, thinking this could be maybe something for me. And then we moved to Uganda. And I think I really had a shift when I moved that far away. And if you heard my NMD speech, I had, we moved that far away and I really missed this community. I, I missed, you know, I missed being part of our mission and I felt pretty isolated. And I really had a moment and I remember exactly where I was, where I thought I, it was like the, the, the road forks, right? And I could go one of two directions. I could just leave this behind and think, 
that was a nice little thing I got into for a while and, and leave it, or I could go all in. So I chose, and I don't know, I can't, I can't remember exactly what, what happened. I think it was a conversation with my husband possibly, but I just chose to go all in. And that's where I really had to draw on a lot of these mindset shifts because to grow a business from barely POB qualified sales coordinator in Uganda, where I couldn't really share the products, I couldn't build a team, you know, having an event, you know, it wasn't really, I, so it, it, it was seemed, it seemed a bit impossible. Well, it seemed like climbing Mount Everest when you're used to running, right? So it seemed a bit daunting, but I think that's where my mind, my mindset training and my training as a life coach really came into play because I knew if I was going to go all in, you know, that was a different path I was going to take. And gosh, I'm, I'm so glad that I did. I mean, a lot of lessons in learning along the way. I, I went from sales coordinator once I decided, right? And we're going to talk about that when you really decide something. I went, from, I went from deciding to be a national marketing director to walking the stage, and it was a little bit less than two years. And, you know, wasn't, that wasn't super fast, but for my whole journey, that was a pretty fast journey for me. And it, it just meant once I decided, I, I'm, I'm a real big believer in the universe kind of working for us, right? Once we make that mindset that shift, uh, I was then attracting in what I needed to go forward. And so from Uganda, I decided I was all in. I decided I traveled to Dubai a couple times, built some team there, got on the phone with a lot of friends from around the world, just started talking to more people and really had that act as if mentality that was acting as if I was an NMD way before I crossed the stage. So that's, that's kind of how, where I'm coming from tonight. And I'll just share with you I'm just going to share with you some of my top tips. And again, I don't think this is anything you're going to, it's, it's nothing you probably haven't heard before, but you know, a lot of this is hearing it multiple times, right? Re repetition is the key to mastery. So I want you guys to get in a good state. You know, part of, part of our listening is just being in good state. So that means when I say good state, you know, sitting up tall, getting ready to, to take in the information, you know, make sure you're taking notes if you can, because taking notes means, you're engaged, and even if you never look back at these notes, which I hope you will, it just means that um, you're, it's going into your brain. So, so my first sort of tip, and it's, this, this is actually just some background, but I love thinking of the mind as a computer, okay? So Michelle just got a new computer. She had to, I'm sure she had to do some system upgrades, right? So our mind is basically a computer, and we get to decide what program to run, okay? So maybe we decide to run if we're running last year's version of Safari, it's not going to be quite up to date as this year's version. So we get to choose every, you know, every minute, every day, every hour, what computer system we're going to run. Okay. So I, 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 I tell this to my boys who are nine and 11 all the time, you know, your mind, your mind is like a computer. So really getting into that mindset that again, that we have the power to, to change our mind. We are not our mind. Um, we have the power to shift it. Okay, so there's lots of reading you can do on that, but that's just a basic underpinning of what I'm going to share. And that we often fall into patterns, just like we do brushing our teeth, just like we do the way that we put on our seatbelt or the way you go to bed. Your body just likes a good habit. Okay, so when you have a thought that goes over and over again that you haven't trained your brain to think differently, it's going to hang on to that thought because it feels comfortable with that thought. And so you've got to train your brain to think differently. And that's where just being conscious of your thoughts before you, be, and you can catch yourself. So catching your thoughts. So really retraining your patterns of thinking. Okay. Um, and then, you know, just our mind is, is designed to keep us safe. You know, back in the days of where we had to look, up, look out for bears chasing us or whatever, like the mind is designed to keep us safe. And so it wants to keep us the same, okay? So when we challenge the thoughts that we have, you're gonna feel some resistance and that's part of the, of the just the ride that you're gonna be on as you, as you move through this process of building up your, your mindset toolbox, your mindset muscle, I call it. It's just like building this bicep, right? We go to the gym, we build our bicep. You've gotta work on building the mindset, okay? So what, one thing, the first thing I would say for building the mindset is to cultivate your flowers. What do I mean by that? So you may have heard this before, your mind you, is either gonna be weeds or flowers. It's like a garden. Okay, so you can either decide to let, if you do nothing, 
basically the weeds take over. Okay, you may be one of those lucky people that just has more positive thoughts than negative, but for most people, the weeds tend to take over when we don't, when we don't pluck them out, right? So what we need to do is minimize the weeds and really cultivate the flowers, okay? So again, this is in 11-year-old language, right? So we can think of our mind as a, as a nice garden. So what are the weeds in your life? I don't know, maybe you wanna type some out for me. What are some things that bring you down? For me, it's watching the news, it's you know scrolling on Facebook and seeing negative posts, um, it's being around negative people. Uh, you know, so maybe thinking of what are some things in your life that are, that are causing you to have negative thoughts. Maybe it's a reaction to somebody that you have a pattern around. Uh, family drama, yep, that's a great one. So family, is you know they're great to practice on guys this is a really it's it's really good to practice this mindset shift because and when you do, when you do it you can actually have like a little smile on your face a little i don't i don't want to say smirk but it's like hey i know i know how to deal with this like i i got it like you can be the observer of what's going on in the drama instead of being in the drama right you cannot react you can let it you can you can be the observer so I'm going to offer that yogic perspective is being the observer. We talk about that a lot in yoga is you get to observe the mind. You get to observe your thoughts and then make choices versus just being in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So, so family drama. Yep. That's a big, big weed that we want to pull. Um, you know, maybe it's, what are you, you know, what are you reading? What are you watching on TV? What kind of conversations are you having, you know, with your spouse? Are you having the same fight about the same thing over and over again? Are you, you know, is, it, is there a better, um, we'll, we'll actually, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I like the, the idea of the question. So thinking about your weeds. And again, this may be just something to send your mind on tonight, tomorrow, this week. Notice, notice how your thoughts react to certain things. So the flowers, this is where we want to spend most of our time is really cultivating the flowers of our mind. So this is being around people that motivate you, people that inspire you, you know, being part of this mission is incredible because I feel like we've got a lot of flowers around us, a lot of great gardeners around us, right? It's the rituals you create every day to protect your brain, to protect your thoughts, whether that's meditation, whether that's mantras, whether that's, you know, scriptures that you read, what are you deciding to fill your brain with first so that you can, you can have control over your thoughts and beliefs, okay? Gratitude, obviously, is a, is a beautiful flower, really concentrating on gratitude. Gratitude for your business. Gratitude for all the lessons you've learned so far. Gratitude for being stuck, if you're stuck. Like, what's the learning to being stuck? Gratitude for every person that's canceled you know every customer that's canceled thank them they've you've learned a lesson from them whether you realize it now or not right you're going to be a little bit better at customer care you might be a little bit better at answering questions you might follow up with that person before the second box ships a little sooner you know so what what have what gratitude can you have for the canceled customers the canceled teammates the teammates that left the um you know the, all the no's so where in your business can you really have gratitude for those things that don't feel like they they may have much gratitude um, other things to cultivate the flowers are, you know, I, I do a lot of mantras. I have, I pulled out for, for just looking at this call, I pulled out just a few, like, these are just a few of my journals I've had, you know, over the past year. And I'm super messy writer. I'm not neat and, I, and they're not all full, but a lot of mantras, guys, written out. I'm a national marketing director. I'm a 24 club NMD. I am awesome. I am, you know, worth this. I'm a badass mom. I am, you know, walking that stage. I am. So get some mantras that you can believe in. Um, and it may take a while. It's like trying on a new dress. You're like, oh, I don't know if this quite fits. You know, I'm not sure I can pull off this like red slinky thing. So try on different mantras, just like you would try on a different dress, right? And see like, maybe this one, yeah, this one's good. And then like try it in the shower and try it in the car. No one has to hear this, but you. But you've got you've to be your own best leader and distributor before you can go out and attract anybody, okay? So this is, this is filling you up so that when people, when you do run into that person in the grocery store or at the gym, 
you have built yourself up. So you're like, yeah, I'm the badass mom that's, you know, attracting this, or I'm the, I'm the leader that's, I'm a leader of leaders. I have a great team. I have a rocking team. We're into, we're on to good things. You know, those things are just at the tip of your tongue. You may not share with anybody, but that's the aura, the, the, um, the energy, the vibration that you're putting out. Okay. So the mantras are super important. Write them down multiple times, not just once, um, multiple, multiple times. Um, and then high quality question. Okay. So my, that, that, that pretty much covers weeds and flowers, but you'll see as I enter, as I tell you some other things, we may get back to that. Okay. So number two, Anyone else have anything to add? I'll just pause. Anything else to add in the flowers? Anything they do that they love that just grows their flowers or cultivates their flowers in their brain? Prayer. Um, you know, I would just say the food we eat, the exercise we do. I mean, all the self-care stuff. Music. Music. Oh, I forgot that. Yes. Music. Pilates and yoga. I love doing yep. that. Yep. Yep. Nice. Sing in and D song every morning. Great. Yeah, that's, I can't believe I forgot that because that's something my 11 year old, when he's in a bad mood, I'm like, go listen to music. Go, like, just go turn on a song. So, music is such a, it's a deep trigger in our brain, right? We have emotions to that and, and smells as well. So, I mean, I like the can candles or, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's, um, you know, just, just changing the senses. Great. Thanks for sharing that. The second one is, asking better questions. I, I call them asking quality questions of yourself and of others. And so this is super key. And I think the better that you as leaders can be at asking yourself good questions and then asking your team good questions, the better, the better responses you're going to get, the better we send our brain. When we ask a question, our brain goes on a mission, right? To find the answer. Okay. So if your question is, Oh, why am I stuck at SC? Guess what? You're going to get a pretty low energy, not very helpful answer. You know, your brain's going to like list off the top 10 reasons you suck. This business sucks. The products suck. You know, it's, it's not going to be all that enlightening. Um, I know I've, I've asked that question a couple of times, believe me. So what's a better question you can ask yourself? You know, is it what, you know, who do I need to be to, to really rock this business? You know, what, who do I want to attract in this business? Um, who, you know, what books do I need to read? What, you know, what mentors do I need to, to attract? What coach do I need to hire? Um, you know, I don't know what your question is, but there's a better quality question than, you know, why am I stuck? Why, why do customers cancel? You know, how can I, how can I have an inspiring customer care, um, program, you know, how can I inspire my customers? How can I, you know, how can I follow up in a way that feels really awesome to me? And how can I follow up in a way that, uh, you know, just is simple and convenient and, you know, whatever, whatever you want to ask a question. Um, does anyone have a, um, a non-quality question that they sometimes ask themselves? They can throw out. I promise I won't pick any too much, but anything you can think of? Oh, I'm, I'm in the wrong group then. <laughs> How about who can I help today? Oh, that's a great quality question. Yeah, that, I think that's a quality question. So I would say that sends your brain in a really good way, in a really positive light. Yeah. So the, the probably the poor question would be, why isn't, yeah, so Michelle's got a good poor one. Right. So why can't I recruit someone lately? So that perfect, Michelle, I'm glad you brought that in. So Michelle's thinking, uh, I'm struggling at recruiting. Why can't I recruit anyone? And the brain's going to go, well, it's because you've done this and you haven't done this. And you're, you know, you're, you're doing this wrong. And like the brain's going to come up with lots of reasons why. And then it's, it's not a good, it's not a good place to go. So quality question, Michelle, what do you think a better question would be? Um, what kinds of things can I do to attract more people into my business? Yeah, great. Does that, does that excite you to answer that question? I guess I have to think of, um, you know, some more fun and creative ways that I, you know, things that I love to do where I'm meeting people that, um, 
you know, that I would be possibly able to attract. Yeah. How can I meet fun and creative people? How can I, you know, where, where do fun and creative people hang out? Um, you know, maybe just play around with that and just do some journaling on, you know, those two words seem to come up fun, creative. I don't, can't remember what else you said, but you know, who, who, who am I attracting? That may be a good, better place to start. Who do I want to attract? You know, what, what values do they have? Where do they, where do they hang out? Um, where do they spend their money? What's their, um, what do they wear? Like, who are these, who are these fun and creative people? And what, how can I, how can I connect them? Um, what, what are they looking for? So asking those kind of quality questions. Uh, you know, I think, I think as we move through the marketing plan, you know, sometimes we get stuck. We, you know, just use just the wording that we use is stuck, struggle, hard, you know, the mind that those words should not be in our vocabulary at all as entrepreneurs. I don't feel like, I feel like, you know, part of having a, a mindset retraining the brain is really using, really focusing in our language. And, you know, when you use those words, they're very, they have a lot of weight to them. They're very heavy in the brain and we get, um, we, we, the brain rewards that. Uh, so let's, let's, pick some different words too. So maybe challenge instead of struggle. Um, you know, where can I, where can I grow into this? How can I lean into this? Where can I learn from this? Um, so as you're hearing your teammates, you know, my team knows I never want to hear the word struggle. Like if I hear the word struggle, yeah, we're, we're going to start over. We're going to back up and reframe the question. So really being able to train your team on how to ask a better question. And maybe that's, maybe that's your question. You know, what's a better question to ask yourself right now? So you be the coach and have that question in your back pocket, you know, so that when your team comes with you with their dilemma, with their problem, you know, instead of just solving it or saying, you know, I would first ask, you know, what are, what are, what's another, and another good question is what's another possible solution. Okay. Cause our team often, they come up with two solutions, right? It's this or this, or, you know, anyone that we're, we often in our brain come up with two solutions. It's either this or this. So what's another possible solution for you that would open this up or make it feel light? Or what's another possible solution for you to attract fun and energetic people? What's another? So really letting the brain with open-ended questions. So we call it open-ended when there's multiple answers versus, you know, a closed ended question is yes, no, or it has one, one basic answer. Okay. So I'm just giving you a little bit of coaching training here, but so asking good questions of yourself and then asking good questions of your team. So maybe there's another way to, to reframe the question. Okay. Is that helpful? Is there any, the, the, the question thing? Yeah. I think the question thing is, um, just checking my time. I love, I love the quality questions and I can even get Natalia, there's a list of good quality questions. So you don't have, even have to come up on your, with your own, just something to maybe keep on your side as you're doing coaching calls or share or with your team, you can kind of look down and see if there's anything out there that grabs you. So the, the third one is, gosh, I have, I don't, I have so many here, but I'm going to, I'm going to bring up this one is having the mindset of who you want to become. Okay. So if that's a millionaire, have a million, what would a millionaire's mindset be like? That's a good question. You know, how would a millionaire, uh, show up to a call? You know, how would a millionaire, um, you know, treat the first couple of promotions of our business? How would a millionaire Michelle recruit for her team? You know, so if you're having a millionaire's mindset, maybe you want an NMD mindset, you know, that was my thing. I wanted to have an NMD mindset in Uganda. So I got the zoom line. I got my own team Facebook page. I scheduled my own team calls. I was a sales coordinator. I had no business doing all that, but I, I, in my mind was an NMD. Once I decided, you know, I, I made sure, you know, that Cheryl Cortese knew who I was and I made sure, you know, I just, I put myself out there and I, you know, led my team calls. I led trainings. So what do you need to do to step into who you want to become? What mindset do you need to have? You know, so if there's a goal that you have, um, thinking backwards and say, how would that person, how would that person dress? You know, how would a, you know, how would an NMD show up? How would a, you know, how would they, what, what kind of thinking would they have? How would they handle this obstacle? 
Yes, I might be sitting at VF right now and have, you know, 10 customers, but how would an NMD handle this that has, you know, multiple team and customers and whatever. So getting that sort of bird's eye view on things kind of brings you out of the trees and over the forest, right? And you can kind of get that different perspective. Okay, so another, you know, lots of, you can have lots of mindsets, right? You can have the marathon mindset, you know, a marathon runner is a very different mindset than a sprinter, right? And I think in this business, we have to have the marathon mindset. This is the long, this is the long-term vision, right? So having that, I knew that going in, long-term vision, I've heard three to five years, three to five years, three to five years. So that has been my mindset all along. So, you know, maybe having a marathon mindset is where you need to be. Uh, maybe having here wrote down some others maybe having you know I said a wealth mindset you know what do you need to do to create space for more wealth in your life are you handling the money that you have are you um, you know are you open to giving and receiving what's your feelings around abundance so really being open to the idea of being being wealthy you know have you have you really embraced that what's having a wealth mindset what's a boss babe mindset you know if that's your thing like what would a entrepreneur or a boss be like? How would she? How would she work? Where would she work? You know, where would she be attracting um, people? How would she be setting up her social media? What would she be posting on social media? So thinking of that mindset, Olympic mindset, business mindset, abundance mindset. All these are just little little niches, but you know, maybe maybe one of them feels right for you, or maybe you make up your own. And then work backwards and say, all right, this is the one I'm taking on. And this is the one that I'm really gonna, gonna call my own, okay? And then last, let's see, which one do I wanna focus on? So I'm gonna go with limiting beliefs. I spoke a little bit about this on our sales coordinator training. Oh, just to go back to mindset. So before I came on, just to give you a personal example of the, of it. I put on my training mindset before I got on this call. Okay, it's been snowing in Denver. I've been like in my PJs all day. I didn't get to yoga because it was snowing. I picked up my kids. I was kind of like, uh, you know, just not really into it. I'm like, I got to change my mindset. Put on the hat, change my shirt, brush the teeth. You know, I was like, I, I, I need to call up that NMD trainer versus like the mom who's sloppy and like, you know, in her, still in her Uggs. So it's who you show up as, right? It's, it's those little switches of physiology of my body, of what I'm wearing, of, you know, maybe, you know, how I'm sitting. So when you show up for something, you know, maybe there's a cue for you. Maybe putting a hat on means you're in coaching mode, you know, or maybe, you know, when you're sitting in a certain place in your house, like that's your boss babe area, you know, that's where you're going to make things happen. So really thinking about how you can really trick your mind and just give it little cues to say, okay, I know where we are. Yeah, we're, we're in the boss babe mode. Like we're, we're into action, okay? So last one is just limiting beliefs. And if you've heard about limiting beliefs, uh, this will, you know, I, I don't think this will be anything new, but you know, basically we all have these beliefs that have been around since we were kids. Nothing, nothing bad our parents did, nothing bad our third grade teacher said to us or anything. It's just somehow our mind has developed some beliefs and we have patterns. Okay, so whether it's, you know, something as, you know, maybe you have a belief about that you're not enough or that you're not worthy of money or that you are not a good leader or that you waste money. So we have beliefs around lots of different areas. And I think in our business, it shows up around money, around leadership, around, you know, your personal growth. And so the, you know, what a, a couple of questions just to get out some beliefs and you can write these down is, you know, I am, you know, I am, I am blank at building my business. You know, wh what are you at building your business? Are you, are you building a rocking business? Are you awesome at building your business? Um, how are you at recruiting? So Michelle, this would be a good one. I am, I am blank at recruiting, you know, amazing teammates. So really just figuring out, and again, I don't have a lot of time to go into this, but figuring out for you, maybe some limiting beliefs. Is it around money? Is it around building team? And then changing that belief. First, it's gonna feel really fake, but you've gotta change it on paper first. So rewriting that belief. So if your belief is, you know, I struggle at retracting teammates or I struggle at, maybe it's at advancing teammates. 
you've got to change that belief to a, a more powerful word for yourself so that again your then your actions will match that belief okay because if you're if you have a, a a disempowering belief right now every action everything that you're doing is based on that belief whether you think it is or not everything is is based on that belief so you've got to change the belief to change the what's going to happen okay um all right, I think that I'm out of time and I, I uh, that's, you know, a little, a little slice into mindset, but, you know, I, I'd say there's so much you can do to dive into this. Do one thing, you know, don't go say, I'm going to go read every personal help book. Find one thing that speaks to you. Start, start cultivating your flowers, most of all. That's really important. When you cultivate your own flowers, you're giving people, other people permission to do the same. And, you know, definitely reach out to this amazing group of, you know, we have such an amazing mission and amazing people that I think we're all, we all want the best for ourselves and for each other. Uh, and, and I think, you know, there's so much to learn here. So thank you guys. Is there any questions, anything that you, any ahas or anything you'd like to share? Uh, what, Amanda, what, um, what book would you recommend for mindset, changing mindset? If you, could you know, I really like You Are a Badass. Um, I think Jen Sincero, she's, let me just see if I have it here. I have her everyday book. So the, what, the yellow book I like the best, but it's really simple and it's quick. It's a quick read. Have you read this? Have you read Badass, the Badass book yet? I, no, I haven't. Okay. Okay. So I really... I like this one. I like the, I like that you are a badass and she also has one at you're a badass at making money. And then this one's you are a badass every day. Awesome. And is that your favorite one? The badass every day? No, I like the, just the regular badass. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, okay. Yellow, the yellow one, her first book. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I also, uh, this is a good one. If you, if you feel like the big leap is one where <laughs> It's a good one if you feel like you need to be that fish and jump into the next bowl and you possibly are living, this is a lot around limiting beliefs and why we keep ourselves stuck in one bowl, you know, and what we need to do to change, uh, create a new reality for ourselves so we can change into the next, to the next realm. So I really like this book as well. Awesome. Thank you. I like, I like the four, the four beliefs, um, Four agreements. The good one. Yeah. Not to take things personally. That's a really important one for our business. This is the one about making money. No, because it was like from her. Oh yeah, great, Karina. Yeah. So you know, writing yourself a check for how much you're worth, putting it in your pocket, you know, in your in your purse, writing it out to yourself. I do that all the time, just so you can see it every day. I do vision boards. I just vision finished mine for the year. So again, tr our brain is like a, it's like a puppy dog. It's going to wander off, right? And uh, you hear this all the time. It's going to wander off and pee somewhere else. Like we've got to bring it back and have it pee on the mat that we want it to pee on, right? Or, you know, it's like training the puppy. It's going to wander off. It's going to, you know, go do something else. All our job is, is to keep bringing it back. Keep bringing it back. This is what we're focusing on. This is what we're, this is what we are, you know, and keep bringing it back. So be playful, be, you know, don't take your, don't take it too seriously, guys. Like it, this is, this is all just, you know, having fun and, you know, taking a bit light, light, lightly so that it's not so serious. And, you know, just notice, be like, there I go again. There's that thought. Wow. That is really got to, that has power over me.